DMV Hoop Session, highlighting the best high school basketball in the DMV. Powered by the Scholar Athlete Sports Network, SASN.TV. Hey guys, David Korn and Isaac Harris here with Scholar Athlete Sports Network, joined by the Chief Operating Officer of the Capital Classic, Ricky Goings. Ricky, how are we doing today? Getting excited for the big game? Yes, we are, man. I am. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm so excited to get to cover this event again, and I know Isaac's feeling the same way, right? Yeah, no, I'm so excited. The Capital Classic is being back now officially as a DMV tradition, and it's an amazing feeling to see. Yeah, so I kind of just want to start out this interview. Um, you know, for those who are watching this who may not be super familiar with the Capital Classic, Ricky, can you just kind of give a background on its history and its importance to the region? Oh, yes. The, the Capital Classic is the game that started it all. Um, it was founded by Robert Began. Uh, the first game was played in 1974. Um, and Moses Malone, one of the NBA top 75 players, pl committed to the game and played in it. And it was designed to pit the best players in the DMV area against the best players around the country. And one unique fact about it is in 1979 um, is when McDonald's went to the same owner to star the McDonald's All-American game. So, you know, the what was seen being done with the Capital Classic is why <clears throat> the McDonald's game came about and it's probably the most prestigious game uh, in the country right now. Um, when you think about it and you think about the players that's come through, Michael Jordan played, Magic Johnson played, Dominique Wilkins, um, LeBron James, Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, and Grant Hill, many more. Um, and the fact that the talent in this area was seen as deep enough to compete against some of the best players in the country shows how much respect the rest of the country had for this area. And you look at a lot of the All-Star games that's come about since, it's because of the effectiveness of the Capital Classic. That's so true. That's so true with that. I mean, with the history that comes, it, it, the Capital Classic is like the grandfather of them all. Like it's the Rose Bowl when it comes to high school basketball games. It helped launch the Jordan Brand Classic and the Iverson Classic, along with uh, numerous uh, All Star games around this area here locally as well. Oh, it definitely did. I mean, uh, that's the part I left out. The Jordan Brand Classic was originally the Jordan Brand, the Jordan Capital Classic when Jordan came and worked for the Wizards. Um, then when he departed, he took the game with him to New York, which mm -hmm. is what the Jordan Brand Classic became. Uh, so, Ricky, last year, uh, the the Capital All-Star Capital All Stars came out on top, you know, can you just talk a bit about <clears throat> what that means that the DMV is able to be so competitive with the best players from the rest, from all around the rest of the country and just what it means for basketball in the region? I mean, it's, it's what makes our region so special, the fact that we can compete with the rest of the country. You're talking about a, you know, you're not even talking about a state, right? You're talking about a very small area going up against, you know, the Californias, a mixture of the Californias to Texas and New York. And it speaks to our work over the last, you know, 100 years. Um, a lot of people don't know that basketball kind of, we were one of the first areas to take it seriously. Um, the guy that kind of brought it to this area, uh, E.B. Henderson, he learned directly from James Naismith. And that's kind of where it all started. And so for since basketball has been popular, we've been able to compete. And last year, seeing the Capital All-Stars win shows you that, you know, we can really hold our own against the rest of the country. That's amazing that you mentioned that. And last year, it's typically sometimes the national the United States teams historically is always kind of kind of not beat up on the Capital All-Stars, but kind of, you know, has their number on them. So what was it like for you uh, seeing that that they came on top last year, just personally of uh, growing up here and being part in the basketball scene? What, how well, did that feel for you? I'll say this. So last year was the first Capital Classic I ever attended. Um, so it, it was, you know, that's a, it was good to see. I think that when we're when you're building these rosters, um, a lot of people think, well, we just want to get the biggest names and it's not that. You want to build a roster um, that can have a game to be competitive. And last year with John Lamo, Jamie Kaiser, Armani Hansberg, these are high major players. Um, and then we brought in Mikey Williams, J.J. Taylor, Trey Green, and those guys. Um, the cohesion of the um, D.C. area team is what separated them. And one thing that the AAU culture has done in this area is that now these guys have you know, a lot of times been playing together 
or playing against each other since they were little kids. So getting on the court together doing a Capital Classic is more like a reunion um, than trying to figure each other out. So I, when you look at like uh, the team last year, for example, Malik Mack, um, you know, I got a lot of phone calls with, you know, who, who should the point guard be and this, that. But I went and watched Malik five times because you want to make sure your lead guard in a game like that is going to be looking for his teammates and looking to create. And Malik was that. And I think that was a big part of our team being successful. Yeah, and Malik Mack, what a player. What a season he had this year for Harvard, entering the portal, expecting a big move there. I mean, I felt like I was uh, I was in on the secret because I saw the Capital Classic yet last year and I saw how good he was and I was like, wow, like I, I feel like I was I was in on it before everyone else. But you talked about building out this roster. Um, can you sort of talk about the process of, you know, speaking with these players, speaking with their camps, getting that getting them to compete both for the uh, the Capital All-Stars and the, the U.S. team as well? Yeah, so it's, it's a little different with the U.S. team than the Capital team. So the U.S. team, that process starts a long time out. I normally, you know, I started recruiting this year's team a year ago. Um, I knew that I wanted to bring in Mercy Miller, um, and I wanted to build a roster that would be composed of nasty rank players. And so this year, um, I think it's seven nasty rank players on the U.S. team led by Jalil Bethea, who's uh, the number six player in the country and also looking to be a top five pick in the 2025 draft. So when you're working on this, you know, you, you gather insight from everybody. And you also think of, you know, who do people want to see? And so that's a big part of it. And you have to now, now that the NCAA rolled back the rule that you can play in more than one all-star game, now it's about selling them on why the Capital Classic. And you recruit them the same way you recruit them to come to your high school or come to your college. You tell them what they mean to the roster, what you're going to do for them. The Capital All-Star team was a little different because now I have to kind of sell these guys on why the game is important again. You know, LeBron James played in 2004. After that, there wasn't a lot of big name guys that can play the Capital class. So I had to convince them to listen, we're trying to bring this game back because to me, the DC All-Stars or Capital All-Stars versus United States All-Stars is a competitive game from just the title. A lot of times when you see the McDonald's game and the other games, they're just running up and down the court. The local guys do not want to lose to the national guys and vice versa. So you have that kind of built-in competitive edge. Um, and my partners, uh, Tom and Tom Doyle and Pete uh, Dowders have done a great job of preserving the history of the game and using that as a selling point um, to get kids to come play. That's a that's a good point. Adding adding into that, and I love that you said that you, the big thing about preserving the game because I remember when I was in high school, play, uh, you know, it was always a goal to be a Capital All Star, but the Capital All Star game from like 2014 to like the 2016 before it majorly ended, it kind of lost its luster. It was being hosted at TC Williams in Virginia. And the the game was just kind of picking up whoever they could get, like whatever who was left over in the top 150 at the bottom half of it. So not saying that, not to knock off any of those guys, but those that importance of the preservation of the game just seems so... It showed that last year, and I believe this year it's looking like that based off the rosters that you guys are picking, because it seemed like it's a very historic. Um, this is historic year for the DC area because there's so many kids, so many, so many kids that are going top place <coughs> uh, from just our side of the river, from just the DC area as a whole. Um, going and in, leading into that, you know, next question: um, Was there anybody? Was was there anybody that was not that you were targeting that was not able to participate? Yeah, so, so there, was, there was three, three that I, I wanted that I couldn't get. There was Derek Queen, uh, well, four, I'm sorry, four. Derek Queen, who uh, had uh, some prior commitments. Um, Darren Harris, um, uh, Bryson Tucker, and uh, we had Donnie Freeman committed um, for the most part. Uh, some things came up late. But those are the four I wanted I didn't get. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with the roster we put together with um, several. We have, I think, three top 100s on the capital side with Isaiah Abraham, Jaden Mustaf. Um, there's one more of this top 100. Um, but that's, you know, that was the goal was to, to build out uh, like that. Hmm. 
Yeah, and uh, I, I think the guy you're forgetting, Connie Roots, um, he... Can I Roof is a top 30 yes. player? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. No, no, and so that that perfectly led into my next question. You know, he recently decommitted from Michigan, and he is now sort of on the open market, you could say. How do you think that will sort of just impact the the event, you know, getting more eyes on it, anything like that? You know, what does that decommitment mean? I mean, I think that it gives you another storyline for people to follow. I mean, one, one so to so take a step back, one aspect of the Capital Classic was that it gave fan bases a chance to see these kids for the first time. So prior to, you know, the age of streaming and highlights, you might have heard, hey, you know, Georgetown and Merlin is bringing in this recruit. I want to see him. So when Patrick Ewing was coming to Georgetown, he actually played for the Capital All-Stars. When Joe Smith was coming into Maryland, he played with the Capital All Stars, so that those local fan bases could get a preview of these guys coming into this game. Uh, I went, I was able to lock in all three of Georgetown commits: Kayla Williams on the Capital side, and then um, Thomas Sobo and Kayvon Mulready on the uh, um, U.S. side, so that those fan bases could get a preview for a kid like Kanai Roof. You know, with him getting this platform, it can remind some. If and, and not to say he won't have his process wrapped up before the game, but if exactly, he does, yeah, it, this is the hypothetical, right? But if he doesn't, um, then it definitely gives guys an eye, another eye to say, hey, and to see him on the court with all players on his level, um, can sometimes give give a, a different glimpse. <clears throat> no, and, th- and that's interesting that you brought that up because, um, you know, a lot of people sometimes use All Star Games as a you know, a launch pad to not only just introduce themselves to the college world and also pro world, but just give a launch pad to their fan bases and, you know, potentially like, oh, if they want to make a move or anything like I know, for instance, uh, Tyler Burton from from who's just recently just entered the portal from University of Pennsylvania. This was a big launch pad for him nationally um, when he came to the Capital Class and won the MVP for the Capital team. Um, do you see anything like that with uh, any of the players on the U.S. team that could make a breakout noise kind of um, you know, uh, that way? It's, 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 it's a little unfair for me to comment on that, um, being that I'm the one to hire the coaches and stuff. I don't I don't really want to say per se, but I think that um, you just never know because the lights are bright. You just never know who wants to embrace that moment. Uh, I'm excited to see all the guys play, see all of them compete. Um, I don't want to say I favor one to stand out over the other, but in the flow of the game, I feel like somebody's going to catch fire and uh, and, and make a name for themselves. <clears throat> so one of the guys on the U.S. team who I'm uh, most excited to watch, of course, you mentioned Jaleel Bethea, a bunch of other big names, but uh, maybe the biggest in the literal sense is the uh, 7-7 IMG product and Florida commit um, Olivier Ryu. For, to your, do you think he's the biggest player to, the tallest player to ever compete in the the capital classic i would say second um sean bradley played sean bradley played the game in in 1990 Um, there we go now the difference was sean bradley i think was like the top player in the country or a top five player in the country at the time um but i'm excited he was really you know when i was looking at this roster i was thinking okay we gotta let's do something different let's give somebody else an opportunity that you know might that people are curious about and so i followed him last year I was looking at the roster. I said, let me reach out and see. So I reached out to his high school coach. He got right back to me. He was excited um, to play in this game. Um, and I think, uh, you know, he'll get a chance down. All-Star games typically seem to favor guards. But I think that he'll have a chance to really just introduce himself to the world because he is going to the University of Florida. So it's not like he's going to disappear. So I think people will be real curious, specifically when we do our practices with the NBA scouts there. Um, I think they'll be curious to see him up close in person to see what what he could potentially be. <clears throat> excited for him. He's a he's a big piece that I'm excited for to see because I'm like, oh, he's he played at IMG, played for uh, you know legend, a legendary DMV coach Sean McClone from St. John's. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, that was a I was when I saw the post about. It, I'm like, oh wow, sweet. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. another thing that I'm excited about, you know, other than just him potentially being the second biggest player to come into the Capital Classic. Another um, thing that was part of the Capital Classic that is now that last year you guys took a break from, but now it's coming back. Um, what made you guys decide to bring back the Suburban City game? It's always been a favorite part of me, but I'm excited that it's back. Yeah, so I, I, I really pushed for that. I felt like, number one, it's about inclusion. It's about being involved more players than maybe, because for part of it, let me, let me take a step back. 
part of the tough part of building the capital roster now is that so many of the local players end up leaving for their senior year. So we kind of had to change the dynamic to where, wait a minute, if you played in the DMV and you're from the DMV, even if you spend your senior year in another area, you're still a part of the Capital All-Stars. So what that does is it sometimes take away opportunities from local kids that are here to play. So I felt like and able to really bring the game back historically and to really give the game opportunity to be a, a, a bigger platform for more people we need to bring that game back. And it was more of a logistical thing than an actual, uh, than it being, you know, something we just decided to do. We had to make sure the time worked with the arena, um, make sure we could get the practices in. You know, everything's logistically. But once we figured out the logistics, um, we were able to make it happen. I'm excited to see what happens in that game. I've been announcing the players the uh, last couple of days. So um, I think it, uh, it'll be it'll be fine. Yeah, definitely. I think that'll have a lot of local intrigue there. And, uh, and we're just and one more, just one more thing. So the dynamic yeah. of it, because people are asking, well, who's on the district? So the district all stars are primarily public school players. Mm -hmm. The suburban all stars are private school. Um, yep. In the current climate, I've, that's a little more fitting um, than the old uh, format. Than but we're still stuck with the traditional. Um, names, but the, the the way we selected the teams was along those lines. One hundred percent, and I, I think that clarification is important because I know there's always a little bit more juice in those matchups. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a lot of fun. And uh, I think I just have one more question before we wrap this up. And Ricky, again, thank you so much for being so generous with your time with us. Um, just kind of going forward, um, what do you see in the future of the Capital Classic? You know, we've seen it at ESA. We've seen you bring back the Suburban City game. All these top players on the U.S. and Capital teams are there. What do you see for the future? Um, I think the game has the opportunity to be maybe that game right there with the McDonald's game. If we can continue to get the uh, national players to participate, you know, if we can go get Boozer Twins for next year or uh, Kion, Anthony, you get those guys, and now the rest of the world is looking at like, wait a minute, this is a place we want to play. Um, but I think that's really what's left to be done to be able to put together, you know, that U.S. roster that's so locked in, so good that the Capital guys here are like, wait a minute, I don't care what else I got going on. Even if I'm in the McDonald's game, I want to play in this game too. Yeah, that's great, um, Ricky. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, we really appreciate it. And everyone, make sure to check out the Capital Classic. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> Thank you, guys. DMV Hoop Session, highlighting the best high school basketball in the DMV. Powered by the Scholar Athlete Sports Network, SASN.TV.